So we're very honored um, for this year's Davos Concert Saal that we have uh, uh, Marilyn Sheldrake here with us, who is a biologist, a tropical ecologist, a musician, author of the book, The Entangled Life, also a brewer, um, and all these, all these things conjure up kind of a picture in our minds. But one thing that I was looking at um, was also that your background is in philosophy of science. And I think this for, for, for most of us kind of gives dual pictures. One is picture of science, which seems more, uh, more factual and uh, more exact. And then philosophy, which more is about beliefs and, um, and, feet, uh, and images or, or, or different perceptions. So what exactly is the philosophy of science? And um, can you explain how that, how that drives you? Yes, yeah, so, so normally I think about it as when we want to talk about science itself, when you want to think about the practices of science, the assumptions of, of scientific practices, the, the ways that scientists go about knowing, um, if we want to talk about how we talk about the world. This is what I think of as philosophy of science, history of science, uh, sociology of science, anthropology of science, which is really um, putting science itself, the practices of science, um, under, the, un no, in, under the microscope, as it were, uh, and to think about how it is that we go about knowing uh, and understanding and sharing that knowledge and, and making that knowledge in the first place. So I think it's really important to do that alongside science itself, because if we don't examine the ways that we go about knowing the world as we're knowing the world, then we can fall into some traps uh, just because we haven't um, because we haven't thought about what we're doing. So I think it's very important to have this reflexive um, investigation alongside um, scientific inquiry. Mm -hmm. And you're also a musician, um, so it's it's interesting to think um, and to um, wonder how how you're the fact that you're a musician that also you have this um, philosophy of science background also and biolo biologist how this all combines and influences you in how you perceive uh, fungi and science in general. Yeah, I mean, I don't see them as these separate these separate disciplines. Now I've been encouraged, we were all encouraged, certainly when I was growing up at school, you're encouraged to think about things as these separate subjects. And, um, and I always wished that we weren't encouraged to divide things into subjects so clearly, because for me, it was more fun to just do the things that we found interesting and then, and then be interested in the places where those interests converged and taught us more about um, whatever we were doing. So for example, music, I find just a very helpful practice to to condition my mind you know if i'm um thinking about something or if i'm asking questions about something or being curious about something then when i play music i find answers come more readily that it helps me to think that it helps me to um to understand you know even things that aren't musical so for me it's a very basic practice it's just like you know a bodily function almost you know i eat i sleep i drink water i play music it's not a big it's not you know it's very basic um, and, and I love it because of that, you know, it's, it's just quite fundamental for me. Um, so when it comes to fungi, I think there are lots of ways that music can help. I think music is a very helpful metaphor in general to understand and think about the living world and fungi as well, because uh, music is a process in time. You can't have music at a single instant. And life is also a process. Nature is an event that never stops. We think about life forms as things, uh, as stuff, but really it's processes, stabilized processes, the, the atoms and molecules, the stuff that makes up you, your own body. This is different today from the stuff that made up your own body nine years ago, 10 years ago. So we are really these systems of stability through which matter is passing. And so when we start thinking about life forms as processes rather than things, then music becomes a very helpful metaphor because music is a process. Um, it can't be a thing. It's not ever a thing. It's a process in time. It takes time to have music, it takes time to hear sound. And so that's one way that music helps me to think about the natural world, but there are many others. Mm -hmm. Well, I think for, for us from viewpoint of uh, Davos Concert Saal, this is very refreshing because that has been part of our ideas actually to use music to help people 
um, gain more affiliation and, and to be able to understand more and um, what the nature values are when how they feel and what that helps us then understand what we should do. Um, but I think the, the thing that struck me the most when we took up this topic this year, which we each year we have a different topic and it always has some, some mystery to it. Um, but this year there was so much that, that, you know, when we were looking at the topic that we just don't know. And um, it's interesting how, how it can be that in our natural science studies in, in our schools and, and why we know so little actually about fungi. Is it the progress of science that hasn't looked that deep? Is it, is it related to microscopes and how they're developed? Or is it our own you know, misconceptions of, of, of our place in, in the world? There are a few reasons. It's a really good question. It's a very really important question for us to think about because we know too little about fungi and, and that's actually a problem. You know, we should know more um, because they're so important. And so there, I think there are a few ways we can think about it. Uh, one is that there's technologies that have, evolved, you know, have arisen recently which grant us access to these worlds that we simply didn't have before. Like DNA sequencing, for example, allows us to sequence the DNA of, of these microorganisms in the soil or in our guts or, or wherever and find out who's where. And before, we just simply couldn't do that. You had to look at, under a microscope. It was very slow. We couldn't distinguish between most microorganisms that way. So um, that's one example of something which has really transformed our understanding of the of the natural world and the microscopic organisms that inhabit it so then there are other reasons too i mean fungi have always been confusing and, and until the 1960s within modern western um, systems of classification with with modern scientific systems of classification uh, fungi were considered to be plants so um, so they didn't have their own university departments. So you, you had a plant, department of plant sciences, department of animal sciences, but and fungi were in this sort of dusty corner of, of you know, the neglected little sibling in the plant sciences department. And so for all this time, they didn't have so many students, so many resources, so many professors. I think that's a big reason too. There's been a kind of institutional neglect of the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, yeah, and, and also the, the fungal lives themselves, even if we do have people studying fungi in institutions, they're confusing. You know, they're, it's, they're bewildering, they're confusing, they don't fit their lives and their, their, their sexual habits, their behaviours don't fit easily within the systems of classification and understanding that we build for ourselves. So we still struggle to understand their lives, even if we have you know, resourced professors looking at them. So that's another reason, I think, that we have been slow to come to the fungal world. Um, mm -hmm. because they confuse us and we don't like yeah. to be confused. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, for Latvians, uh, we think we know mushrooms more than anybody else because we pick them, because we know so many different kinds, whether we can eat them, whether we can't eat them. Sometimes we make mistakes, but overall, if we pretty much uh, hit the mark. But actually, we are only seeing a part of the mushroom that is there for the shortest span, actually, of the mushroom's life. And this is just a fruit body. So can you explain maybe more uh, to, to our audience, what is, what is it that we're not seeing and, and how it works? So yeah, so the, a mushroom is just, as you say, the fruit body and it's analogous to the, you know, a, a flower or a fruit on a plant. And imagine if you have a tree outside in your garden, imagine if all you knew of this tree was the flowers or fruit it produced once a year for two weeks, um, you would be missing quite a lot of the story. And it's just like that with fungi. So most fungi live most of their lives as mycelial networks, which grow wherever the fungus is feeding, whether it be the soil, whether it be a rotting log, whether it be the body of an animal. Um, the mycelium, these and branching fusing networks of cells, of tubular cells, is how fungi feed. And so, um, this mushroom is just where the spores are produced, but only a small proportion of fungi produce mushrooms. Many produce spores without needing mushrooms at all. So the mushroom producing fungi are a, a tiny fraction of, the, of fungal diversity. Um, obviously, they're an important fraction for humans because they're the ones we can most easily identify with and which are the history of our cultures 
has most strongly identified with and it's very important for us to remember that and, and to tune into that um, but in, the, in terms of fungal life the mushrooms are just one tiny corner of the fungal kingdom yeah i think that's an interesting um, um picture uh for for our audience is that the fruit body is really only the apple or the mm. raspberry and mm. that the rest is hidden and um the introduction to your book uh the entangled life is called what is it like to be a fungus and for for davis concerts our main thing is really to get our audience to feel what it's like to be our future, our star. So this year it's the Earth Star, which is a puffball. Um, so you're probably the best to tell tell us what it would be like to be this puffball or Earth Star. And then um, for us, the reason why we do that is to understand what we can do to help you as the fungus or the Earth or Earth Star or puffball, so that we can protect it. So if all we see is the fruit body. Um, how can we protect and help this fungus? Um, what, do, what does the fungus need from us as humans um, to, to be able to survive and to be able to still uh, serve its function in, in nature? So there's lots of things here. Um, what is it like to be a fungus is a question I ask at the start of the book, knowing that I'm going to fail, you know, knowing that I'm going to fail to answer that question. and but just wanting to open the space for us to, to imagine in that kind of way, because if we don't begin to imagine, then we can't work out where the limits of our imagination are. And, and it's quite fun to, to find out where the limits are, because normally they're much further than we think. Um, so yeah, that's a question which I spend the whole book you know, wrestling with and come to no firm conclusion. So I don't think I'll be able to um, do that here right now, but, but I do like that question and I do like how hard it is. Uh, and I like how, how, how it forces us to um, not just think about what it's like to be a fungus, but what it's like, what it's like to be a human. And then what does it mean to be a human? What, what is our identity as a species? And how flexible is that? How can we learn to increase the limits of ourself, increase the capacity of you know, this humanity that we have so that we can learn to exist as more responsible and connected organisms on this planet at this dangerous moment that we've caused? Um, so I think that question is important for all those reasons. And when it comes to puffballs, um, there is also, there's lots of puffballs, I suppose. Um, I think of puffballs as being a group of fungi that produce their spores on the inside rather than, you know, in, in this gills or tooth or pores like some mushrooms do. Um, and I, I don't, I can't speak to the particulars of the earth star in in latvia because i just don't know the scene and the situation there uh, but in general for mushroom producing fungi um, we can help to spread their spores so when you pick them if you do pick them then to kick them in baskets that which, which release their spores as you carry them not to use plastic bags that's a general important thing um, because when you're picking them, of course, you are helping to disperse their spores. And so you want to maximize that. Um, not to damage the mycelial network too much, you know, not to, not to, not to the, disturb the soil in which they're growing, um, not to trample too hard, not to compact the soil around them too much to very carefully remove it. Um, these are just basic general things one can do. Um, but the nice thing about fungal conservation is that when you're conserving fungi, you really have to think at the level of the ecosystem because you know, these networks lace through these soil, lace through in these relationships with different organisms, whether they're small organisms like bacteria or big organisms like plants. Um, and so you can't really think about conserving fungi without conserving ecosystems in general. Um, and that means all sorts of things. That means, you know, not um, destroying habitats for what, you know, in whatever way, um, we destroy them all the time, um, not spraying fungicides around the place, um, not spraying antibiotics, not having livestock filled with antibiotics, leaking those into the soil. You know, there are so many things we can do. Um, so, yeah, so I wish you all the best. I'm, I, I'm, great, I'm happy you chose the Earth Star, which is such a, <laughs> um, such a humble and, and beautiful fungus. Yes, um, very, very great practical um, suggestions. I think La for Latvians, taking that we usually take our baskets. So hope I didn't, I didn't think that this, 
think about the fact that that's actually a good way to spread the spores. So if Latvians mm -hmm. want, uh, like the chanterelles or our, our you know, our boleta to uh, to be somewhere else in the forest, we should shake our baskets, make a <laughs> bit more furiously over those areas. <laughs> maybe we'll help. Anyway, um, so thank you so much, so much for this discussion. Um, it will be very uh, good for our audience. It's a good introduction to um, now the concert, which we will be having, where we also maybe have not managed to um, learn exactly what it's like to be a fungus, but we hope that with um, this discussion with you and with the, the music that we have prepared for this year, that people at least have a chance to try to understand both with knowledge and with musical inspiration of what it's like to be a fungus. So thank you so much for this and um, all the best. Thank you, thank you. I wish you the best.